Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use localization and internationalization, uh, otherwise known as I-18N and L-10N uh, uh, support in your React native iOS application. Uh, so a few things about this, so in order to use uh, localization support you need to install a React native component uh, which is found on GitHub, uh, which I have on the page, and I'll and I'll be talking through it as I, as I go along as well. Uh, so with this plugin, you can actually add uh, language support for multiple languages in your app. So, for example, if you have a user that has uh, English set up as their language uh, on their device, uh, it could potentially then show. Uh, everything in English versus if you have a user who uh, has set up their device to use the Spanish language it'll automatically choose to show uh, Spanish text to that user so you'll have translation data uh, for every language you wish to support uh, so this tutorial is actually going to be very similar to a previous one I did uh, I did a previous tutorial on uh, the same topic but for Ionic Framework and Angular JS. Uh, so, so it'll be similar, but uh, different frameworks, different languages. So let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a fresh uh, React Native uh, project on our desktop. So let's go ahead and, and start it off. React Native init React Project. So I'll just take a second to create it on my desktop. All right, perfect. Uh, so let's go ahead and navigate into that project using our terminal. And the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to install that that component for for translations. So that that GitHub component can be installed like the following. So npm install React Native i18n, and then we want to do the save. Uh, tag because we're going to be using uh, the the files in a moment. All right, that was quick, so it's already added. So let's go ahead and, and clear our terminal. Uh, so before we can actually start programming with this plugin, uh, we actually need to add it to our Xcode project. So go ahead and go to your desktop and open up the React project and open up the Xcode file, the Xcode project file. So let's go ahead and expand uh, the tree on the left, the project tree, and we're going to right click on libraries. And then we're going to say add files uh, to the React project. And inside of our, um, here I'll, I'll go back a level. So inside of our React project, uh, you'll notice a node modules directory. And then you'll notice a React Native i18n directory. Uh, go ahead and add the Xcode project. So click the Xcode project and click Add. All of the settings that are default are fine. All right. So you've just added that to your to your project. Uh, the second thing that we need to do is we need to click on Build Phases, and then we need to click Link Binary with Libraries, and then we can click the little plus button. It should detect it at the top in your workspace, so you want to add librnI18n.a. Uh, so click it and click Add. So at this point, you can start programming. So we can close this for now. Um, and go. what we want to do is we want to actually um, load the index.ios.js file in our text editor. This is where we're going to do all of our magic. The first thing we want to do is we want to include uh, the library in our JavaScript. So we can say i18n equals require react native i18n. 
So we can save that. Uh, part two uh, would be to actually create various translations. So you can you can really do this wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead and do it at the bottom, right below styles. And I'm going to say i18n dot translations equals, and it's going to be an object. And inside this object, I'm going to have various uh, locales. So I'm going to say, for example, en for English. And I'm going to have the text greeting. And I'm going to say hello. I'm also going to have the tag es. And that's going to have the greeting variable say hola, because it's Spanish. And I'm going to go ahead and, and take it one, one more step further, and I'm going to add French, fr, and that's going to have a greeting variable of bonjour. So I have, I have three different translations for this variable called greeting. Uh, so how do, I, how do I use this? Well, go back into your render area, and we're going to say, uh, for text, we're going to say, um, we're going to use some, some curly brackets here. We're going to say i18n dot t. And that will allow us to pick a variable that we want to use. So we're going to say greeting. And we can go ahead and click save. Uh, if we really wanted to, I mean, I'm not really changing any styles here. So we're not, we're not really making a fancy app because that doesn't prove our point. So down here, we can actually say i18 uh, n dot t, and if we really wanted to, we could say goodbye. So let's go ahead and add one more translation just for the heck of it. So for English, we're going to say goodbye. We'll just say bye. For Spanish, we'll say goodbye is adios. And I think for French, goodbye would be au revoir. All right, so that's all good, except on the device, um, it, it actually, most devices give you um, a, a locale that is a little more than say EN or ES. So for example, they might say EN US or EN GB. Uh, so there, there's multiple different uh, kind of, I guess you could say dialects maybe. Uh, to English or Spanish or, or anything along that nature. So what we want to do, uh, well at least what I'm going to do to be lazy, is I'm going to add a fallback. So that way it falls back uh, to the base language. So you can add a fallback by doing the following here. i18n dot fallback equals true. So now um, it'll kind of strip off whatever comes after EN or ES or FR. It'll just let you use a generic uh, language for whatever country you might end up in. So let's go ahead and save it. And we can go ahead and go back into our Xcode project. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to run it. Let that boot up. And it's saying we're missing a translation because I don't think I, I think I made a typo. So if we go back into our code, uh, I think the problem lies with fallback. I think it is actually supposed to be plural, fallbacks. So let's save it. And then we should be able to do command R to refresh. Yeah, that worked. So it was actually fallbacks, not fallback. So I refreshed it, and for whatever reason, my simulator is in French right now. So let's go ahead and click the home. We're going to change the language here. We're going to go to settings, general. Uh, I'm going to say language. I'm going to change it back to English. It's resetting it. I think 
what I probably want to do is I probably want to reset Xcode too, so just in case. You, you won't have to worry about this on an actual device. But uh, let's go ahead and, and open it. And it says hello because now my simulator is now in English. So just a, just a little rehash here. Um, it, it, we didn't do a whole lot. We, we included the React Native uh, internationalization library from GitHub, the, the component. We added uh, a fallback, so we're, we're falling back all, um, all locales to kind of this base level, EN or, or ES, and you, and you saw that in action too, uh, because uh, for French we actually saw FR hyphen US. Uh, so we actually added this fallback, we set it to true, so that way it just falls back to a generic FR rather than FR US or, or whatever it is in Europe or Canada. Um, and then we added three different uh, possible translations. So depending on what their device is set at will be kind of what is chosen.